What's up, y'all? Good morning, Dar Sizzle and put in here and Stuart. We got a mixture of greenies and beautiful pilchards this morning in my Barracuda cast net. Heck yeah. That's what I'm talking about. I'm always so stoked when I catch bait first thing in the morning like this. Yeah. Nice baits. Nice snook baits. Snook candy right there. And I just wanted to say too, when you're Looking for bait first thing in the morning, it's really tough and you really gotta train yourself. It takes a lot of practice to find these base, baits, especially when you're using a cast net. You really have to train your eyes to know what to look for, especially in these early daylight hours. So just had a school of them come right through and I just threw perfectly on them. Let's see if we can do it one more time and get a few more, but it's already a great morning. And I think today we are just gonna try to pound the snook. We're gonna see how many snook we can catch in one day Maybe have a little competition, but we are running out of snook season here real soon. So let's get this day started. Heck yeah. Got a mixture of smaller baits on that throw. My bad. I was seeing bait flip, but it wasn't the right bait. But you know what? They can be chummers. We like to chum up the water when we're fishing for snook. And you can see in my quarter inch net, a lot of them got stuck on there. Just part of the game here. But I did get a couple nice pilchards. Got my polarized Revo lenses on, sunglass lenses, so that way I can actually see the bait because the sun is coming up and it gives me a little bit of leverage in the water when I'm looking for them flipping. So I'm probably gonna give it one more throw, third time's a charm, see what else we can do. And then we gotta move on to our first fishing spot. Yeah, we're not going to buy bait. Check this, y'all. Look at this cast. <laughs> Look at this fluke. Whoa. Look, Look at that. That's pretty crazy, right? The flounder, I guess. Flounder, actually, fluke, whatever. whatever you want to call it. Little sardines. Most of them ain't going to survive. But look at that. That's a flounder, right? Yeah. First fish of the day. And he's <laughs> caught on the outside of the cast net. He actually wasn't even in the cast net, What's which is pretty wild. Those things? I don't know. We can check real quick. <laughs> Look how cool he is. I never get to catch too many of those guys. So cool. Oh, that's a lot of baits. All right, guys. So we were at the first spot, one of the dock spots, using the live bait that I just caught in my cast net. I'm so excited. And I've got a big old uh, thread fin on. They actually are not the hardiest baits in the world, so I'm going to use them first. Pitching them right up underneath this dock here. And we're gonna see if we get some bites. We still got some moving tide. Tide's about to switch, so we're happy about the fact that we have tide, and we're just gonna have to see what happens. See if these fish wanna play. Oh, oh gosh, I'm wrapped. Oh gosh. Bail open, bail open. She's wrapping me up, she's wrapping me up, wrapping me up this way, this way. Through a lot of docks this way, this way, this way. Bail's open, big fish. This way, this way, this way. All right, I can just fight it with the bow in here. All right, how should we do this? It's four foot deep, you wanna get in the water? Hold on, she's out in the open. Oh, it's gone. It's all, it ran way past those docks, there's no way. Oh, she was actually really close. It just pulled. All right, that was a pretty crazy battle to start the morning. First fish, beautiful snook, man. Really pulled hard, shook like crazy. I could see a nice fish on the surface. Took me through those docks. And it was a little mess there trying to like get that fish free, but she was out underneath over here. And I had a spree spooled the whole time so I don't pop her off, but I started to reel on her, hook pulled. So nothing you can do there, but let's get back on it while we still got this current. Darn. What? Oh my God, I just watched a huge snow come up. I'm wrapped around that thing. And it's gone. Grr. Did you fish pull it? Put it, lock us back down. What? Lock us back down. That fish never knew it got hooked. Where is it? I don't know, my bad catfish. There's getting tight again. Let go again. Come on. It just doesn't feel right. We're gonna see what it is. It's probably a cat. How'd I know? How'd I know? Big catfish on my bait. What the heck? All right. The snook have stopped biting. I missed two really nice fish. It's been a little bit of a slow morning with two bites, missing two fish. Now a catfish on the line. Only keeper fish in the boat right now is a flounder and he's in my live well. 
hoping to let him go, or maybe not. We'll see, but it's time to go to the next spot and find some fish. Hate these things. Oh, yes. Getting a fish, getting a fish. Get over here. We got something on. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Let's see what we got. I hope it's not a catfish. Oh, nice. Net, net baby. Nice baby. Nice fish. All right, so he fought weird. I thought it was honestly catfish. <laughs> That's pretty lame of me to say that. All right, so check him out. That is a nice snook. Finally got a snook in the boat, heck yeah. You see the circle hook doing its job. Ate a live thread fin, and we were actually just about to head out of this little spot. Been here about 15 minutes, didn't get any bites. We got a nice fish there. Really dark, as you can see, he lives in the river here. Nice fish, a little on the skinny side, but it's a snook. Snook is a snook. All right, guys, so I'm gonna post exactly where I caught this fish on the Fish Angler app. Go ahead and download it for free, follow me for free, and find out exactly where you guys can catch this snook too. Let's get a quick measure and get him away. All right, this fish is 26 inches long. Gonna let him go, but check out my necklace, by the way, my pendant that I'm wearing. He looks exactly like the snook I just caught. I have snook pendants now available for sale on the website, Sterling Silver Pendants. Check it out if you want your own snook pendant like I'm wearing. All right, he's already sucking on my thumb. Okay, woo. All right, let's see if we can put some more in the boat right now. First fish in about four hours. Finally, that just goes to show you that you gotta put your time in on the water. That's all, that's, that's what fishing's all about, time on the water. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna show you how we're fishing today or what I'm using as my setup where I just caught that snook. So I've just pulled out a juicy thread fin. That's what I just caught that snook on. I caught pilchards and thread fins this morning in my cast net, as well as a bunch of chummers. Using a six aught inline mustad circle hook and I just ran it through the upper bottom jaw, through the upper jaw. That's the best way to do it, especially when you're casting them out. Um, you know, that way the hook does not double back on itself. We got a 40 pound fluorocarbon leader tied to the hook with the uni knot. I got two split shots on here to get the weight down because we're in about 10 to 15 feet of water. My leader is fairly long. I'm using probably a 10 foot leader here. And then we got my, down to my braid and I just got a uni to uni knot on my braid. 30 pound braid is my main line. I'm using my 6000 Stella or Shimano Stella and paired. <laughs> Paired with my Shimano Chavala jigging rod. And no, I am not sponsored by any of these people. Just letting you guys know that's what I'm using. All right, here we go. So let's cast out this juicy bait. See if we get another fish. I would throw. All right. <laughs> okay, let it sink. Let it sink. Smacked him, smacked him, nice. Heck yeah, dude. All right, we just got some catfish in there. We got some baits. Get that well open immediately. Sorry. All right, upgraded to the 10 foot net. That's what you get. <laughs> Heck yeah. There you go. Let's get him right in there. Oh man, baby. Come the rest of the side, baby. I wish we lived here. Let's keep a couple big ones, yeah. I told Silo, oh, go to the 10 foot because you're going to catch more bait and who's happy now? Yeah, we got a nice amount of bait. I could have brought, probably could have blacked that out a little more, but I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. We only got a couple more hours worth of fishing for us. We got to go home and get another YouTube video up. When you see this, the video will already be up, but we're always working. Nice fish, Brian. <sighs> Crashing. Good job. Brian just crushed a toad. You gotta tell him the story. Crushed a toad on his back. I don't know rod. how much stars you got on, on the GoPro. That was so but sick. We got these. I am like totally crashing. We got these baits, and I'm just we're just tossing them as fast as we can. And right on this dock over here. It just got totally destroyed. Hold on, I got wind blowing me all over the place. I'm trying to do the trolling motor. That was a mayhem. 
That was insane, guys. Oh. I tried to get as much as I could, but I was shaking and talking to Brian. Like, catch that fish, get him out of there. Grab the net. But I did turn, I did turn the GoPro on him when he hooked that fish. That is a beautiful fish, man. Good job. No, you did it. No, you did it. Good job. Woo! I did it. Not me, Brian. All the credit in the world. All putting all day. Brian just saved the day with the slot. Leave the day. Hold on. He's staying in the boat. Five to go with Heck the yes, guys. Staying in the boat. Look at that fish. Staying in the boat, baby. Hold your fish. Hold him in front of me. Hold your fish. Oh, you get in the frame. There we go. Whoa. I yes. thought it was going to be an overslot. Yes. This baby, this girl, yes. is about 31 inches long. Heck yes! All right. That's how you do it. Trip saver in the last five minutes of fishing. Yeah. Good job, Brian. Nice. Hard work pays off, though. We caught those baits. Yeah. I caught those juicy baits, and Brian just landed a toad. We got a snook, catch, clean, cook coming up real soon. Yeah. Or now. Oh. Sick. All right, y'all. We got our slot snook. So happy. It's Brian's slot snook, I know. I don't get any credit for it. But I did catch the bait that he used to catch the snook, so I kind of get a little credit for it. And you probably are wondering too, why isn't Brian filleting this fish right now? Well, two things. One is we all have different responsibilities in our job, and this is my job. My job is to fillet fish. I'm an expert at it, and he's gonna actually do a crappy job, believe it or not. So it is my job to fillet this fish up. He's in my seven inch blade today. And of course, like always, I always say this, it's always sound like a broken record. You definitely want a sharp knife. These guys have very thick scales. And if you think about all these fish that live by structure and docks and stuff, they need protection to, to protect their bodies. They're going to be rubbing up against stuff. And snook, of course, are found underneath docks and boats and anywhere where there's types of structure. So just running that blade underneath and you can see these giant scales are coming off. Crazy. And there is no commercial value for snook, if you didn't know that. So you cannot buy this snook anywhere in the United States. You cannot buy snook, period. So like this is the most sought after game fish in Florida, period. Like this is why people come to Florida. People love fishing for snook. And again, you can't buy it. So the only way to get snook is to catch it. And they do not taste fishy at all. That's why people love them so much. Um, so like you can eat it any freaking way you want. You can eat it sushi, sashimi, uh, bake it, fry it, deep fry it, uh, grill it, whatever you want to do with it, make tacos, um, you know, whatever kind of fancy meal, this is the fish to do it with. If you've never had snook before, I highly recommend that you go out and try to catch one. Just make sure you take a look at your regulations because on this coast of Florida, the slot size for a snook has to be a minimum of 28 inches long to a maximum of 32 inches long. This guy was 31. And you do, you are required to have a snook permit. It costs like five bucks. So we both have that and you're allowed one snook per day, at least on this coast. So just check your regulations and uh, find out what works for your area. But you can see him just running that down the backbone, bending the blade, getting as much as I need as I possibly can. First slot of the season for us, and the season's actually about to close June 1st. Um, they're gonna close it because the snook are gonna be congregated in the inlets and passes, and they're gonna be spawning, and they're easy pickings. So now the season will close in about two weeks. We'll see what happens. We could get lucky and get another, but with my luck out here, it's probably not gonna happen. So but at least we got one, we are happy. We caught a lot back in the day when my father was still alive and we, um, we did an excellent snook and papalote, catch, clean, cook, snook and paper. It was freaking epic. And today we're gonna do something a little special with some other harvested fish, other harvested seafood that we have caught. You see I'm just running that down, but these guys have super, super tough skin. So you just want that knife sharp. There we go. There's our snook filet. Try to leave that rib cage bone intact right there. There's, you know, a little bit of stomach meat there. I don't think that's the end of the world at all, but did a great job. Let's go ahead and switch to my nine inch blade. Seven inch would work, but I just want to make sure like when I'm going stalling back and forth, I have enough room. So I'm going to switch to the nine. And this is the reason why Snook got the name of Soapfish. Uh, initially, people said they were disgusting. Back in the day, tasted like soap, and that's because they left the skin on the filet. You have to remove it if you want this fish to taste good. 
you know, with redfish and all the other fish out there, we cook it on the half shell and snapper and stuff. There's no problem with the skin, but for whatever reason, if you leave a skin on a snook, he's gonna taste like soap. There we go. Look at that beautiful meat. I mean, not fishy at all. Again, I said you can eat this raw. I'm not gonna do it today, but you can. You definitely can. Maybe if we do catch another one before it close, maybe we'll do that for you all. But they are excellent fish. The most popular fish ever. <laughs> all right, so just knocking out those pin bones, which is not a big deal. There we go. There's our beautiful snook filet, heck yeah. So I'm gonna finish up the other side of this bad boy. Then meet you guys in the house for the cooking with pudding portion of this video. And it's blowing today. I'm so tired of this wind. I hope it ends soon, but we'll meet you in the house in just a second. Thanks so much, Dr. Sizzle, for cleaning that snook for us, uh, or for me, actually, because I caught it. Welcome, guys, to another edition of Cooking with Pudding. Although I might change my name to the Tom Brady of snook fishing, being that I clutch played that snook in the last two minutes of play. That was totally awesome by me. Thank you so much. Anyway, write down in the comments if you think I should change my name to Tom Brady. Maybe not. Although I do have a more beautiful significant other. I will see that. All right, so today, guys, we are going to do a stuffed snook with these crab claws and crab meat that we caught our own selves out in the intercoastal. We're not gonna stuff it, we're gonna make it like a coating. It's gonna be delicious, and we put, it, this is a reminder, you guys gotta follow our sizzle on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. You are missing a ton of content, okay? We are like live tweeting pretty much what goes on during the day. We are putting on Facebook all kinds of pictures of kids and girls and all the videos and other pictures on Instagram. You're just missing a ton of images that you're just not seeing if you're only going on YouTube, all right? So we're gonna dive right into it. And this is a recipe that's inspired by uh, Joe on Instagram and Doug on Facebook. They basically came up with the same thing and we had asked people for an inspiration and so here we are. So the first step, I'm of course using this great pan. First thing is we're gonna throw some butter in here and we're gonna soften up some garlic, celery, and some onions. Get in there at our sizzle. We're just gonna soften this up. All right guys, you can see here I got all those ingredients that I softened up in the pan just now. We're gonna add the rest. Crab, breadcrumbs, mayonnaise, egg, some Old Bay seasoning, and pimentos. Gonna stir it up, and that is our stuffing. Next step, guys, we're gonna sear this uh, snook. I'm just gonna put some butter in this beautiful pan you guys got me again. Swirl it around. And we're gonna sear this, so cook it about halfway. Throw some, throw some lemon on there. Darcy loves lemon. Yeah, get in here, sizzle. All right, guys, I put the timer on for about three minutes, and now I'm just going to uh, flip it over, you see? And we'll see you in another three minutes. All right, guys, I cut that down to about two minutes because the fish was really cooking. And now we are going to pile on some of our coating or our stuffing onto this fish. This is you gotta get in here for this. Nice. These snooks are really too thick to be stuffing. I mean, that's more of a flounder thing. We're gonna sprinkle on a little paprika. Lemon, why not? Well, who cares? Back it up, though, Sizzle. Now I'm gonna take this whole thing. Foggy. <laughs> Made it foggy. Is it still foggy? Yeah, no. Okay. All right, we're gonna take this whole thing. That's, what happened. that's why I'm the cameraman, guys. We're gonna take this, put it right in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes. We're talking about cameraman. Did you see that footage of Dolph Sizzle shot? That's why I'm the cameraman. It was all over the place. Did you see it? All right, we'll be back in a minute. All right, guys. I already took some of the fish out because as you, because oh, as you know, fish cooks depending how thick it is. So those were thin, so I took them out early. And that's the key to cooking fish well. <gasps> Look at this. Is to take it out when it's done. You know, don't overcook it. All right, guys, I'll see you at the table for the taste test. But I think it's gonna be delicious. Woohoo! I'm excited. Brian's already dove, dove into it. That's how he knows it's delicious. No, I haven't. And Brian was saying you never get this amount of stuffing like at a restaurant. No. Stuff, like stuffed fish was like my childhood favorite thing to eat in the world. That and beer. <laughs> Budweiser. 
right, when you were growing up? Yes. Well, yeah. back in the She's day. Had a bad I'm word. talking about when he was growing up. It's a little different. Yes, I know, I know. We used to drink Budweiser back in the 80s. Yeah. This is a, but Land Shark's much better. Whoa, whoa. Rookie, rookie. No. All right, try the fish. I'm sorry. I did not expect that to happen. I do not blame Land Shark or, any, or Margaritaville for her errors in beer drinking. This is heaven on earth. This is so good. This, this might like be one of our elegant, my, elegant, super gourmet. Like, and the fact that we harvested our stone crab traps, our stone crab claws, and Brian caught that snook. And uh, as usual, guys, don't forget about anything, if you, anything you saw in the video today. Links are in the description. It's so good. From fish angler to bracelets to necklaces to gear, whatever. Yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Again, that was a total miracle catch, honestly. At the end of the I day, call it skill. two minutes before leaving, epic, epic, epic. That's what you're know, talking about. When players like Tom Brady and I yeah. score touchdowns consistently in the two, last two minutes. Brian's been catching some nice fish. I mean, you know, is it really luck or is it skill? Exactly. I'm just saying. Yeah, no, luck is 100% preparation. Boom! <laughs> That's what my dad used to say. Anyway. <laughs> yep. Stop boring these fine people. Maybe we should put this in the cookbook too. Maybe an update. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> Until our next adventure, we hope you enjoyed it. Comment below if you did. Until our next adventure, follow your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on catching. catching.